dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Let's just hop right into this. So, um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, my name is Shandell. As you know, everyone on Instagram knows me as Inspired by Shandell. Uh, what I do is I coach a lot of entrepreneurs that are millennials, most likely. I just give them a lot of emotional support and teach them how to get this money online. Hey, how to secure the bag. Yes. She's so if you want to know how to secure the bag, holla. <laughs> yes. yes. So, we're talking a lot about, you know, mixed race identities mm -hmm. growing up interracial kind of being caught in the middle of things yeah let everyone know what's your mix so i'm born in canada first mm -hmm. generation my mother is born in jamaica uh, mm -hmm. new kingston mm -hmm. and my father is born in guyana uh, now if you looked at my mom she's a whiter skinned jamaican so mm -hmm. she's like lighter than you and i uh, but born and raised in Kingston before she came to Canada. Mm -hmm. And my dad is like a little bit more of my complexion, but born in Guyana. Uh, and then their background, I guess you could say, like their parents, from my dad's side on the Guyanese, it's Already Portuguese people. Up, right? Yeah. And then my like on my mom's side, of course, the Jamaican. Mm -hmm. All of her sisters are obviously really, really fair skin. And like she's one of the lightest of them all. So she looks like real white. But so they're just all generation, generation yeah. Jamaican. There's no other mix in there. They're all the just Jamaican like, that is like white. Mm -hmm. That whole mixture there would have been from uh, England. My grandfather oh, okay. colonized and whatnot, of right? Of course, so, you know how history is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Jamaican and Guyanese, but oftentimes when I say that, uh, people are obviously like, hmm. Yeah, how how Jamaican are you're so how Guyanese like, yeah. like your life, your hair, which you know, which part of you is the Jamaican excuse me. <laughs> so speaking of what part of you is Jamaican, what part of you is Guyanese, when it comes to like traditional practices and cultural norms around the household, mm -hmm. how much of each of your cultures um was like influenced in your lifestyle? Uh the food was very uh Guyanese, which is funny because mm -hmm. my mother is the Jamaican one and she does a lot of the cooking, but she grew up around my dad's um, mother cooking in that household a lot, uh, more so cooking around her own mother. Uh, so majority of the Guyanese food is what mm -hmm. gets cooked in the house. Um, I love my soca music, uh, <laughs> but I also love my dance hall and my reggae. So like Sunday is the, you know, the Bob Marley, the Jamaican, and then every other day is like the soca, me having a fet in my room, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so soca all the time. Like, Guyanese <laughs> people love their soca. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you were to define the word identity, what like what do you think what is an identity to you? Yeah. Uh I think right now that's a really uh tough question, like even in terms of color, um and you know, just where you believe that you're from. I identify always as a first generation Canadian. Mm -hmm. i I'm really proud of that. I'm mm -hmm. proud of like my parents, uh, you know, and their parents, you know, taking the steps to provide a better lifestyle for their families and their yeah. legacy, you know. Uh, but I think as generations go down, a lot of us are really conscious of having that legacy be left behind. So I think like I more identify as uh, the potential legacy that we're leaving behind mm -hmm. as uh, black people and mixed people and uh, just anybody of Anybody that came from somewhere else, you know. So what I you mean? wouldn't totally wholly use the um, term identity to describe a complexion per se, no, or nationality expression. Your identity is about the gen like the cultural traditions that you bring forward as a first generation Canadian here moving mm -hmm. forward now. Like, Definitely. what's your mark that you're going to leave here? Exactly. So in. it really is exactly what you so said. So then, would you say that you have an identity? So in that terms, yes, you have an identity. I believe I have an identity. I mean, I don't really live by too many titles, uh, mm -hmm. so I'm not like uncomfortable by like identity or the word title because I've kind of uh, reestablished what that means mm -hmm. to me. So it's not like mm -hmm. this is my identity. Call me by it. Remember that as my only piece. But of the my world legacy. will always look at you mm -hmm. through their own perspective. That's like another thing I was gonna get to and ask. I was gonna say, well, how does how do you feel that the world? perceives your identity because mm -hmm. you might say that I don't really have an identity because I am just me but the world definitely always wants to put a label on it and mm -hmm. I'm sure identifies you a certain way so yeah. do you feel that that has an impact on you or that affects you 
Uh, definitely. I don't think as so much now uh, compared to like high school and elementary school. Mm -hmm. Not really having life experiences to back up how you feel or what you know or what other people are telling you. Yeah. You know, so now, um, you know, being 27, you can look back on what's happened in elementary school and high school where, you know, people were kind of telling you how to identify whether that was your fair. I literally had a conversation in high school where it's like, like, girls black women yeah. all sorts of different shades were literally telling me oh no in jamaica they call you fair skin so you have to refer to yourself as fair skin and then another person told me like no she's mixed and another person like no she's light skin and they had a conversation about this so, like with me present yeah like, and i'm like sitting there yourself, like yeah. confused honestly yeah. shit yeah. like Isn't leaving this out this thing? yeah like, leaving yeah. leaving the conversation like so all of these girls from high school literally are like making me call myself fair skin. I think that was the conclusion that that was the proper term. And I just walked out of that conversation like, well, let me go back to my day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, thanks for the education, I guess, you know, I mean, yeah. and it's almost like, perspective right like at that point it's it is like, it's perspective and it's also like a lack of yeah and it's like am i supposed to bring the shade understand. the shade ruler with me you know what i mean <laughs> like I, like i don't know uh, if i should apologize or what you like people make you feel like you should apologize and like i definitely recognize the privilege yes, but yes you know to like have a conversation about like what shade of the ruler you're on and what you have to title yourself and stuff like that like it's upsetting. It's upsetting. It's confusing. Yeah. And like when you want to obviously be um, progressive and like not side with your people, but like, you know, literally be like, hey, like this is a problem that we had and we still have. We want to be a part of the, um, you know, progressive conversation yeah. about it, not necessarily always be so confused by the end of the conversation yeah. because like our input is. Um, I don't want to say not as important. Half warranted. Maybe it's like half warranted. Like somebody <laughs> might kind of like slow your roll and it's like, yeah, yeah. okay, I will, but like I was just trying to get right. Like, just gonna... I'm just being <laughs> and being... you still, you're just confused by the end of it all. Yeah. You, and you're just trying to do, the, do what's good, you know, to, I totally to be on the that. side of yeah. like, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, just let me on the human side. Human rights. Yeah. yeah. Like, like just, I want to have human rights too, right? Yeah. Or like have a voice and be heard and feel validated in my truth. Yeah. So as someone that identifies as Guyanese and Jamaican, and there's so many different, I guess, um, skin tones on the spectrum in these specific cultures. Like these mm -hmm. are the two cultures that are very known to be extremely mixed. Where do you position yourself in conversations of, you know, white privilege and black rights matter when people look at you and think you're biracial? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think now I'm a lot more conscious because I've educated on uh, everything that is going on and everything that has gone on. Um, growing up, I was almost taught to call myself mixed and not identify as black. I wasn't told specifically, like, don't identify as black, mm -hmm. but I was always like told you're mixed, you're mixed, you're mixed, you're mixed. So what I would say like, oh, but so I'm black. It's kind of like, no, you're mixed. And I don't know why that was a thing mm -hmm. in the 90s. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, but that's what I was always kind of told. Mm -hmm. So as I like had to unconfuse myself about the situation to be like, I'm pretty sure I fall in some category that's on the black side. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you have to kind of discover that for yourself. When I hear people talking about, you know, black rights and black issues and black lives matter and stuff like that like my heart is more with it my mind is more with it i'm more I, i'm more you know aware and conscious of what can i do to make it better because i'm a part of that conversation if yeah. shit goes down but now obviously Amen. i understand the difference of like white and black just being a you no know, biracial yeah, yeah. child and then being i'm jamaican and guyanese mm -hmm. i'm black mm -hmm. Yeah, you just look mixed. Yeah. <laughs> I still have no idea fully. Like, I say my dad's Jamaican, and I don't know, like, what type of mix he is, and he's very, like, brown-skinned. So, like, mm -hmm. I know there's some mixture in there. I know there's some Scottish. That's what he says mm -hmm. off the top. He also says there's some, like, Arawak Indian. So, I know Spanish. there's other stuff. Yeah. 
but I don't even know. I'm not a, like a hundred percent certain. We don't have the facts either. Don't got the facts. <laughs> Ain't got the facts. Just look look got like this. Yeah. <laughs> Woke up like this. Just look like cousins. Out the womb. <laughs> yeah, like literally. We're all cousins. We're all cousins. <laughs> That's a thing. At this part of the segment, I like to talk about a that some shit moment. That some shit. <laughs> And that some shit moment is just basically tell me about a time when somebody said something to you that was so outrageous because of you being mixed race or them assuming that you might have been biracial. What are some crazy things you've heard? Uh, one thing is I went to Girl Guides as a kid at okay. a church and my oldest brother brought me and I'm pretty sure he wasn't fully aware of what was said. I think he might have been a little aware. Mm -hmm. I feel like if he fully heard it, he probably would have said something. Yeah. Uh, but I was like in grade two, it's really young. I probably shouldn't even remember this, but it's one of those things where you're like, remember, and you're like, did that even happen? It's was like that said? Yeah. Or and was <laughs> I just so young that I like made up this thing in my mind mm -hmm. because people can't be that cruel, right? And, <laughs> right, and, but. I decided I'm gonna look into it. There was a church across the street, they had girl guides. I showed up, my brother brought me, and the lady at the church like kind of bent down and whispered to me, and she was just like, sweetie, we don't accept black girls. Dear <laughs> white people, oh. and I'm stop like, doing this. And like, this. at this time, I how don't even know you? how black I am. Like, <laughs> you know, like, cause everyone's confusing me. Oh, But no. then I had this white lady tell me, we don't, like, you know? I just remember you turning out of that church, church you turn out of a church um and sit, like thinking to myself like well that was the weirdest experience i've ever had to date like i didn't even yeah. understand it i wasn't even mad because i was so confused by it. i was just like oh, okay oh, <laughs> so oh, you know um yeah so i didn't do girl guides so that wasn't a thing in my childhood i guess not <laughs> uh, so my my initials is ls my last name is mm -hmm. my middle name mm -hmm. right is ls at one point in high school, I changed my my Facebook. We didn't even have Instagram, really. Mm -hmm. uh, my Facebook to Chandel LS. And another mixed girl thought that I had changed it because LS stood for light like skin. skin. <laughs> you know, she's probably going to watch this. This is going to be hilarious. So, and I don't think she ever know, knew the truth about this. So this mm -hmm. is good that it's on a whole YouTube video for her to find out 10 years later. But she now changed her last name to LS, thinking it was like a light skin club. And we already had so much fire on us in high school about like being those girls that thought you were the shit because yeah. you were light skin. Oh so God. when she were changed like, it to light skin, no, I was like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, no, we're going to get torched. But um, I just went along with it because it was already done. Just like light skin club, or whatever, light, LS, team LS. And um, then it got weird because then I guess some girls felt a way about it, of course, like, you know, darker skinned women. And uh, before they could all kind of get mad at her, mm -hmm. she threw me under the bus. Of course. Weirdo. She threw me under the bus because she was scared as shit about all the other black girls. Easiest thing to do, high school shit, right? You know, high school was, I don't miss high school. I don't miss high school. No. <laughs> so looking back on all that you've been through, your experiences, and who you are now. What's a message that you'd have to your younger self? Message to my younger self. I would... I think it's different now, actually, because I would. the message I was going to give myself was to look for like more content and more education, more videos, more role models, more mentors that are Black, that have Black experiences, whether it's in Canada, Africa, America, you know, people that are in all the Spanish countries that are mm -hmm. like, I'm pretty sure we're black too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, just educate myself more and just like see myself more in shows and stuff like that. Cause I like watched a lot of shows that just had all white people. Like I just realized that there's no black people in friends like last month. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought about it. I don't watch friends. I used to binge Never friends, friends, you know what I mean? And like Seinfeld and stuff yeah. like that. I love Seinfeld, but you know, like this is not. You know, I'm one of those like one off episodes of seeing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not like totally foreign. Yes. I know what Seinfeld is, I know what friends is. <laughs> I just never watched. Yeah, but I think now life. there is, you know, there's a lot of representation and stuff like that. Um, I think, right, I think the message I would give my younger self would um, just don't be afraid to say, I am black. Mm hmm. It's not something you should, you know, you should be afraid to say if you're mixed because of 
other people going to tell you how black you really are. You know what I mean? I think that's something that we know mm -hmm. better than anybody. Mm -hmm. You are the culture that you were brought up in and that you adapted to and that you, you know, like no one can really tell anybody anything. If you were to define your mixed life in one word, one or two words, what would those words be? Mm -hmm. Lack of being able to keep up with the hype on the baby hairs. <laughs> That's a long couple of words. So, uh, baby hairs? <laughs> baby hairs. Lack of skill on baby hairs. Girl, you just need the right ingredients. Let's get real. <laughs> like, I can't keep up with it, man. Like, I appreciate it, but I just... I'm dead. Define your mixed life. Baby hairs that won't stick. Yeah, like, I'm not trying to be a part of it. Like, I love it from, like, once, three times a year. And there's so much, like, everybody's going hard with it right now, and I just can't keep up. So, like, I would just like to be oh, mixed God. without the baby hairs. That's my current 2020 experience. I'm done. The whole conversation's been serious. I, like... <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be